My name is Columbus Stewart. I'm a Benedictine monk, and I'm the executive director of the Hill Museum and Manuscript Library in Collegeville, Minnesota. I'm a native of Houston, Texas, educated various parts of the US and abroad, and I've now been living in Minnesota for the past several decades in my monastery, and then since 2003, leading the work of Himmel, the Hill Museum and Manuscript Library. My own academic field is historical. I study early Christianity, late antiquity, particularly the rise of Christian monasticism in the Middle East and then the spread to the West. So I research in some of the languages in the manuscripts that we've preserved. We began the current phase of our work in 2003 when I became director, working in Lebanon initially with Christian tradition manuscripts partnering with many different types of Christian communities representing different languages and histories, and very quickly moved from Lebanon into neighboring Syria, and for a number of years had projects in Aleppo, again working with a, a variety of Christian communities that had been there for a very long time because of that very cosmopolitan city located on the Silk Road. We then began to work in Southeast Turkey with uh, very small Christian communities which had been there well, basically since early Christianity, but are now just a very small presence because of all the difficulties of the 19th and 20th centuries. And then we moved into Iraq in 2009. And we were working there before the rise of Daesh, the Islamic State, during and after. And we were able to photograph a number of manuscripts which have since been lost. The only access we have to the thoughts of our ancestors and even to their very voices are in what they chose to write down in manuscripts because there is no audio, there is no video, there was no printing. So if we want to find out what people cared about in the past and what their experience was and what the lessons were that they learned, we have to read their manuscripts. And the goal is that by reading the manuscripts, we not only understand their lives and the issues that they struggled with, but we might get some clues for how to make sense of our present day world, and even, we hope, to make better decisions for the future. So we like to go deep into particular traditions. So we're deeply and broadly within particular languages or particular religious traditions. But we also hope to have a kind of comparative cultural study, where we'll look at manuscripts for example, from Christian communities in the Middle East and put them alongside manuscripts from Muslim communities in the Middle East and see what the connections are. One of the lessons we've learned is that ideas and even particular writings flowed back and forth. A traditional folk story might develop a kind of Christian version and it might also develop an Islamic version. And we, when we see that process happening, it helps us understand better how these communities coexisted and sometimes interacted. Uh, their arguments, the questions that they face together, um, their daily life, living alongside one another. And so I think that that kind of comparative cross-cultural manuscript study is going to be a real legacy of this project. I think it's, it's pretty obvious that if we can learn from the wisdom of our ancestors, just like in our families, we learn from our parents and our grandparents, that we might get some clues, uh, some clues to better understand what we ourselves are experiencing but may not have words for, or find information about some of the same issues that we struggle with in the modern world, religious conflict, ethnic conflict, linguistic difference. Uh, different approaches to culture and uh, the situation of the globalized, highly technological world. It may seem ironic to go back into the past to find clues for how to deal with the present and the future, but that's why we study history. And as an historian myself, I'm certainly a strong believer in the wisdom of that. How else do we understand what's happening, for example, in the Middle East, unless we understand the religious history and the cultural history? the conflicts of the past, persecutions different groups have faced, invasions and conquests, famines, disease, all of these things. And where are we today? Dealing with a global pandemic, dealing with conflicts, dealing with invasions and struggles. So I think if we listen to the voices of the past, we might just get a clue or two for the future.